In this video, we're going to look at how to solve equations using trial and improvement. To do so, make sure you've got a scientific calculator, one with a squared button, a cubed button, a square root one, and so on, because you may need to use those. Okay, so this is our first example. It says, solve the equation x cubed plus 7x equals 30, correct to one decimal place. And two of the trials have been non-force. Uh, what's happened is we've put, tried two, so we've done two cubed plus seven times two, and we've got 22 and that's too low because we want 30 and we've tried 3 so 3 cubed plus 7 times 3 is equal to 48 and that's too large because we wanted 30 so what we're going to do is we're going to carry on this table okay now we want to get our answer to one decimal place so our answer well it's going to be in between 2 and 3 so it could be like you know 2.1 2.2 2.3 2.4 and so on and we need to find which one of those ones it will be Okay, so we've tried 2, we've tried 3, uh, we're looking for 30, that's somewhere in between the 22 and 48, and we're, so let's try 2.5, okay, so that's the first thing we're going to try on our table, the first value we're going to try is 2.5. Now, we've got x cubed plus 7 times x, that means we're going to cube our number that we think of, and we're going to add 7 times the number. So, whenever we're doing 2.5, that means we're going to do 2.5 cubed plus 7 times 2.5. So we just type that into our calculator. So get your scientific calculator and type in 2.5 cubed. Uh, the cubed button may be above the squared button. So you might need to press shift. Um, so 2.5 cubed plus seven times 2.5. And whenever I try that, I get that's equal to 33.125. And we want 30, uh, 30, so that's too large or too big. Okay, so we've tried 2.5. Well, that's too large. Now let's try, I don't know, 2.4. So we're going to try 2.4 cubed plus 7 times 2.4. And now we just type that into the calculator. So 2.4 cubed plus 7 times 2.4. And again, we're looking for 30, and we have got 30.624. And again, that's too big. Now you need to keep doing this until we get the numbers either side. So with 2.4 is too big, we need to find the first one that's too low to get the two uh, numbers to one decimal place either side. So let's now try 2.3. So we're going to do 2.3 cubed plus 7 times 2.3. We'll do that on our calculator and see what we get. So 2.3 cubed plus 7 times 2.3. So that this time is equal to 28.3. Two six seven, and that's too small so we know we want our answer to one decimal place so we know it's either going to be it's either going to be 22.4 or 2.3 so it's going to be one of those two numbers so what we're going to do is we're now going to see which one's closest now don't just look at the numbers and say oh well we want 30 so 30.624 is the, the closest one what we have to do is we've got to do the, uh, a thing called the checker so what we're going to do is I always draw this little sketch and I put 2.3 at one end of the line and I put 2.4 at the other end of the line and our answer is going to be in between here somewhere what I do is I do the number in the middle so in between 2.3 and 2.4 will be 2.35 now we know 2.3 is too low and we know 2.4 is too high now if we try 2.35 that will either be too high or too low and then we'll know which side of the line our answer is on um, so therefore we can then see which one's closest either 2.3 or 2.4 so let's try our 2.35 so 2.35, so again, we're gonna do 2.35 cubed plus seven times 2.35. So 2.35 cubed plus seven times 2.35. And again, we'll type that in our calculator, 2.35 cubed plus seven times 2.35. And this time I've got that's equal to 29.427875. And that is too small. Okay, so if we have a look at our checker, we know our checker is too small, so 2.35 is too small. Now if you think about it, if this is too small, this is too small, and this is too large, our answer must be on this side of the line, in between the middle and the right hand side, because if it's too small, too small, too large, it has to be in here somewhere. That means the answer is closer to 2.4 than it is to 2.3. So to one decimal place, our answer will be 2.4. And that's it. So that's how you do a trial and improvement question. It's very important that you show clearly the numbers you try each time. 
um, make you sure if they've given you a table that you're filling that out correctly and if they haven't that you draw one and you show clearly which number you try each time it's, it's sort of tempting to sometimes just type them into your calculator and not write it down so make sure you're writing it down make sure you write if it's too big or too small and then the most important thing I think is getting the numbers either side of it so if it's to one decimal place you'll get like 2.4 2.3 or 7.8 and 7.9 and then doing the number in the middle to show for certain which one's the closest and then choosing your answer you know mathematically okay so let's do another example. This time the question says use trial and improvement to find a solution to the equation x cubed minus x equals 21, giving your answer to one decimal place. Now this time they didn't draw a table for so I would recommend getting your ruler and drawing your table. Okay, uh, By drawing the table it will help you um, show clearly your method and what you're doing to the examiner. So draw your table. Um, it's handy that I can just move the line like that. You probably can't do that with your uh, page. Okay, and we'll put in our, our column. So the first column's x, that's the number we're gonna try. The next column is what we're working out. So we're doing x cubed minus x. And the last column is one called comment. Okay, so we need to find our answer to one decimal place. Now, I, we have, they haven't given us any numbers to start off with, so we're just gonna try some whole numbers to start off with. Uh, so let's try, I don't know, let's try uh, two. So we're going to do 2 cubed and then we're going to subtract 2. So 2 cubed subtract 2. Uh, you can do that in your calculator or I know this one. I see it's, temp it's tempting to sometimes just do and work it in your head but do do it in the calculator. It's on a calculator test. Uh, 2 cubes 8 take away 2 will be 6 but let's just work it out anyway just to make sure. So 6 we want 21 so our comment is too low or too small. Okay so let's try 3. So we're going to do 3 cubed take away 3. Okay, because it says you're going to cube the number and you're going to take away x, so we take away the number, so we're going to cube it and take away 3. So 3 cubed minus 3 is equal to 24. And that is too high. That's fantastic. That means we've found the two numbers either side. We've found that it's uh, the two whole numbers that's in between. We know it's in between 2 and 3. Now, I may have tried a number to begin with, such as 5, and found that was way too high and had to adjust it and to try lower numbers. It doesn't matter as long as you get the two numbers either side, the, the, the integers that are the one that's too low and the one that's too high. So you know it's in between 2 and 3. So let's try. Uh, well, we're looking for 21. Um, you could try 2.5, 2.6, whatever. You know, you can choose which ones to try. Some people might try numbers close to 3 because if you're looking for 21 and 3 is 24 you might want to try 2.8 something like that I'm just going to try 2.5 just to I don't know why but I just try uh, 2.5 cubed take away the number 2.5 equals so again we'll type that into your scientific calculators 2.5 cubed minus 2.5 and I find that's equal to 13.125 and that's too low Okay, so let's go higher. We want 21, so let's go to the 2.8, like I said I would. So 2.8 cubed minus 2.8. Let's try that and see what we get. So 2.8 cubed minus 2.8. Uh, this time I thought that's equal to 19.152. Again, that's too low. We're looking for 21, so too low. Let's try 2.9. So 2.9 cubed plus 2.9. Again, we're looking for, oh, sorry, minus 2.9. It's a good idea actually to write it out. So 2.9 cubed minus 2.9. And whenever we work out that, we get that's equal to 21.489, which is too high. This is great. It's great because we found the two numbers to one decimal place on either side. We've got 2.8 uh, and 2.9. So again, I draw a little, uh, little number line, just like this. Uh, just to see what it would look like. So 2.8 is too low and 2.9 is too high. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the checkers. So the checkers in the middle, so we're going to do 2.85, okay? Um, because that's in the middle and that will let us know which side our answer is going to be on. So we're going to do 2.85 cubed minus 2.85. And again, we'll do that on our calculator, 2.85 cubed minus 2.85. And I've got that's equal to 20.299125, which is too low. So that means that, well, if this number's too low, and this number's too low, and this one's too high, it means our answer must be in here somewhere. And this one, well, if you look at our answer, our, our exact solution is closer to 2.9 than it is to 2.8. So therefore, our answer will have to be 2.9. That's it. 
So my tips are trial and improvement. Number one, make sure you've got your calculator. Um, make sure you know how to use it. Make sure you know where the squared button is, the cube button, the square root button, and so on. Um, and um, whenever you're doing the questions, make sure you set it out in a clear manner. I would recommend drawing a table. Um, also, and I think this is the one that students forget, is to make sure you do the checker, the number in between. If you want it to do, uh, one decimal place, make sure you go in between the two that you know it's going to be in between and do the number in the middle. Okay, 